Good day, nerds, and welcome to our Oscar special on uh this is gonna be our time to to go through some Oscar predictions. So thanks for joining us here. It's gonna be with me, your host Ken, co-host Steve, uh, and then we've got Nerd Cantina community member uh, Sean Mullen joining us again as a is a huge uh, fan of cinema, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna go through uh, a lot of the or all of these categories. Uh, some of them look a little quicker than others, but the the goal is hey we're gonna talk a bit about what we think eh, maybe should win, probably some predictions on what we think will win because that's not always the same on uh, on what we think should win and will win, uh, and uh, and go category by category. So. Steve, what do you think? Yeah, we uh, this should be fun, you know. So we're gonna do our <laughs> predictions. Uh, this is gonna release on what is that? Friday the sixth. Oh no, Friday the. We haven't 7th? talked about. It. We won't put a date on this. It's gonna go out when I'm ready. <laughs> it's gonna go out when I'm done well ready to put it out. And uh, if that's. <laughs> well, either if, way, you're gonna you're gonna have some time to to digest this episode. Um, try to listen to it before Sunday night and and see if we nerd Stradamus any of these these predictions. Um, we do have a lot of categories to get through, so this should be fun. We're gonna we're gonna only do a few of them real quick, uh, so we have some time to really delve deep into the major topics at the end. Uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be enjoyable. I like right, it. And uh, and thanks again, Sean, for for joining us here. And uh, if if you already listened to uh, our weekly show you heard sean uh over there with uh with us going over the weekly topics and uh and he's back with us again now to do these oscar talks so sean thanks again yeah thank you for having me all right let's get into it because there's way too many categories um but starting off uh we're going to go with some of the, the lighter ones that are a bit easier to to get through the first one being uh the best in uh makeup and hair let's see how we want to so Makeup and hair nominees are uh, Bombshell. Uh, do I need to give the get the people's names? Like, or can we just go? Nah, nah, nah. I think Let's we'll do the names if, for the, if they win, if we choose. Okay. Or, or if we choose. So, yeah. so the nominees for makeup and hairstyle are Bombshell, Joker, Judy, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, and 1917. Um, I think me and me and Sean both agree on on this one, uh, whether it'll win or not. I, I don't know if I'm too solid on on that, but we both picked a uh, bombshell. Any any reason to expand on that? So I haven't seen bombshell. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just you know it's funny. Like I mean, Joker definitely had some really great makeup and hair, or at least makeup, right? But that was, I mean, there was a couple. Uh, overall, it was. I mean, it's, I'm not going to say it was bad. Um, or there, yeah. Anyways, and then 1917. I mean, because makeup. And hair, you know, I wonder if makeup would also include special effects makeup, um, or that's just strictly under the SFX category. Well, Bomb- Bombshell did such a good job of, but yeah, of making these people like into who they were supposed to be because because it was a story ripped from real life, you know. So when when they put Geraldo up there, we all know what Geraldo looks like. So they really had to nail what these people look like to whereas the other ones they just have to kind of nail the the time period the 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 mood the, the the tone of the movie um the only one i see bombshell possibly losing out to is is judy or 1917 1917 just because it was such a, a good film but with Judy, Hollywood loves them some Hollywood, man. And <laughs> and her, she did look like Judy Garland. And from what I heard, this is one of the films that I didn't get a chance to see. From what I heard, she was phenomenal in it. So, you know, Hollywood loves to pat themselves on the back. So I do see themselves possibly giving this Oscar to Judy. Yeah, see, I would, I could see maybe Judy winning, but I also, the same reason that, well, I guess let's just, yeah, let's not even put Joker in the conversation again. Cause like you said, that's fiction. Um, and I think they're definitely going to award more for who was able to capture uh, nonfiction. Um, I, I would almost lean more towards bombshell just cause we had so many more people that were represented, but I, at the same time, I mean, I'm sure Judy had it. A- yeah. They, they had like 12 TV personalities that when you hear their name instantly, you can picture who their face was. And in order to, to stay into the, into the movie, you needed to be able to believe that. And they did a really good job at that. I will give them that. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's a good point too, is like you said, I mean, these are people they're on the, uh, you see them all, uh, 
pretty often and it's also very recent it's this is the closest um this is the movie that was made representing a time that was the closest to our current reality right so it's like it's only a couple years ago um so they they definitely had to be held more accountable um more people are going to know would know whether or not they were you know hitting that okay well bombshells are pick on that one on to the next one on the next one, so the the next one we'll we'll cover is uh is best international feature film of the year, and uh, you know the nominees there are Corpus Christi, Honeyland, uh, Les Mis, uh, Pain and Glory, and Parasite. And uh, Sean, I know, know you're a big fan here. Yeah, this is uh, I mean for me it's hands down Parasite. This is definitely really huge. Um, they have several awards. I mean, <clears throat> it's. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I didn't. I didn't even see the rest of the movies. I don't feel I. I necessarily. I probably should, but I don't feel I need to. Parasite was done so well that if there's that many good foreign films in one year in that category, I kind of feel like an asshole then for not seeing them because if 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 foreigners are putting out this kind of quality and I'm just ignoring it, you know, I'm just out of being a ignorant American, I'm kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think a parasite it has to be for for everybody the the going in i mean it's nominated for best picture here right it, exactly. it doesn't matter like it, it yeah the how board. could it be this nominated is, for best a, picture and not win best international film it'd be like kind of yeah, yeah. It, it'd be stupid of it of it not to i will say though that um i, I do think it's going to win international just because i don't think it was best picture I have no problem with it being nominated for that, but at the same time, I enjoyed it. I liked it. It was very artistic, but given the fact that 2019 was such a stellar year for movies, I couldn't give it the the best picture Oscar. So I think they take, I think they take international feature film. They put that feather in their hat, be proud of what they did and, and, and go, you know, gently into the night. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah i think we're i think we're all on the same page there with that one that, that's that's pretty much a lock i think we'll be shocked if uh anybody else picks it up <laughs> all right well uh i guess we can move on to uh to the next topic right so that's going to be I lost my notes here but that's the music you, and you can just say i guess you know what's in the brackets so original score yeah, okay. so this yeah, this will be your original score. So a a, so, a score that was, you know, written specifically for this movie. Um yeah, and we got Joker, Little Women, uh Marriage Story 1917 and Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. I'm I think I'm going with 1917 on this one. Um and really only because like one, I think that Hollywood loves these types of movies, so I think they're they're the the front runner. But I would lean towards Joker if they didn't put that Jock Jams ass song on the on the goddamn <laughs> stairs. Like I don't think you can give them give them <laughs> that's <good>. like <laughs> yeah. It's so funny because that was the only thing I was going to contribute to this whole conversation. <laughs> I don't think you can give it to him just for that point, because because I think I think I think everybody at that scene went, "What the fuck? What the fuck?" Yeah, I'm, <laughs> just just to kind of mix things up a little bit, you know, I, I I put down like this is the one one of the categories where I would say Little Woman has a little bit more of a dog in the fight, um, but at the same time, if it's you know, so that that was kind of my pick, just to change things up a little bit and this is one of the categories where i could vote for them um besides another one we'll get to that one but it's really you know yeah it comes down to like joker in 1917 and as you pointed out i mean well and you really can't count out john williams as much as we should on the the rise of skywalker you really can't ever count out john williams hollywood does love them some williams um but the competition and, yeah the competition is so fierce and yeah. To me, 1917, the, just the whole tone of that movie, the, the score really picked up the tone of that. I did, I did think that it did pick up the tone in Joker, too. I loved all the, the cello pieces and, you know, the, the dancing in the bathroom and, and all that. But I just, I don't know. I think, I think 1917 is going to take this one. All right. Yeah. I, I, 
think, uh, you know, I haven't seen 1917. For me, it, the, the score in Joker, uh, I, I would, not knowing what the other ones did, but I would never think that Joker would be a bad choice for this category because the, the music d- it does tell the story. It does absolutely contribute to uh, the, the progression of that story uh, in, a, in a very unique way. But I guess we'll move forward to, uh, to the next one, right? So the Achievement in Music written for most pictures, the original song. Yeah. Yeah, um, you got you got Toy Story four with "I Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away." You have Rocket Man with "I'm Gonna Love Me Again," um, Breakthrough, "I'm Standing With You," Frozen two, "Into the Unknown," and Stand Up from Harriet. If you want to type those into your Spotify and give them a listen, <laughs> um, honestly, I don't really have a, a dog in this game. Um, I could see them. I, I honestly, if I if you know we're we're putting Vegas bets on all these, you're gonna force me to pick one. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna love me again from Rocket Man, just because you. I mean, again, it's an award show. You, it's bias. Like you can't you can't giving an award out in itself is a a, a bias endeavor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can't. It's all subjective. So so bias is always going to play into it. And I think they just give Elton John a fucking Oscar because he's Elton John. Yeah, and I kind of with my vote too, I also did like a little bit of a process of elimination type thing. And I went with a stand up by Harriet just based on the fact that, you know, this is the one category I think that it has a chance. And so if they want to spread it out a little bit, you know, show some love and, and not just have, you know, multiple um, awards given to the same thing. Although at the same time, you know, Rocket Man wasn't really nominated for much either. So that is a, yeah, but just to give some diversity and a little bit of a change up, I'm going to say stand up by Harriet. So we have two different picks. But yeah, I'm the same. I think you're. The, I think Ken, you're the only one that's seen Frozen Two in here. I was gonna say I was, was, I was that about the to jam? rock into the unknown. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's still the jam. Yeah, let's do it. It's still the jam. <laughs> it's still the jam in my house. This, this <laughs> <laughs> the things playing all the time over in uh over in my place. I mean, so. I don't. Th- I don't think Randy Newman can top. You got a friend in me, so I don't. I don't see him ever getting it again. Um. Just, yeah, I, I think I think they give Elton John. I don't know if he's won an EGOT yet. But I think they're trying to give him that that piece <laughs> of the puzzle. I feel like he's probably I, I, at least we could pull this up on IMDb. I feel like he probably has an Oscar, right? Like um, Lion King, right? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he got it for Lion King. Yeah, yeah, it would make sense. But I was just say, um, Ken. So, like, is you know that that Frozen Two song though? Is it? doing as good as it was um like is, is let it go or is it not as i mean cause i like, no it's not as big okay. as, as, as i mean you gotta remember like let it go was on the radio yeah like, yeah you can't you couldn't get away from that damn song uh this one it, it's it's good it tells the story well, well but, with them uh, getting so much I, flack for inclusion i can't see them giving it to harriet to make sure harriet could actually say they were an oscar winning film <laughs> rather than an oscar nominated you know because you just think of all the blurbs they put on the cases like i you know they've they've been taking a lot of shit lately it'd be a shitty reason to give out an award but i could definitely see that that happening uh but i also haven't heard the song yet and i don't know if it is of quality and and deserves it or not so i I try not to judge too harshly but i i do think that hollywood man they like they love themselves elton john's part of that community i think they just give it to elton all right well uh the next two categories uh I don't know the difference between, and, and maybe Sean, you can enlighten us here, but we've got the achievement in sound editing and then achievement in sound mixing. So, uh, so the one thing, you know, I was, I did a little bit of research on this. Uh, they, the one thing they said, remember is E comes before M, um, you know, so editing becomes before the mixing. So editing is, um, you know, I think that's like uh, sounds that they're going to create for it. Like, you know, let's say we, we went to like, back in the old days with the original Jurassic Park, making those dinosaur sounds, that would fall under editing for sure. Um, it might also, mixing will probably be a factor, but editing is where, you know, if they created some unique sounds to, for those dinosaurs, 
Um, that's yeah, uh, that, that's the category where you see the people in the room with the headphones with like <laughs> shoes on their hands walking on yeah. a different piece of wood to make this this I'm sound. Just, I'm just yeah. thinking Mo- Monty Python and Monty Python <laughs> yeah, riding the horse. <laughs> yeah. um, so for editing, we had Ford versus Ferrari, Joker. 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Star Wars again, The Rise of Skywalker, and hey, those lightsaber sounds, right? Yeah. (laughs) Um, Steve, where do you land on this one? So, I have... I have my who I think is going to win and who I would like to see win on this one. Um, who I think is going to win is 1917. Um, I do yeah, think too. that, you know, you have war movies. They, they tend to give a lot of these to war movies because there is so many manufactured sounds and whatnot in it. But honestly, I would like to see Ford versus Ferrari win. Um, I think despite – I think Ford versus Ferrari comes out any year but this year – it wins all kinds of Oscars. I thought that movie was phenomenal. Um, the the chemistry between Bale and Damon was was excellent. The story was excellent, and I think this would be an opportunity to give a really well done movie that would win Oscars in any other film year a an Oscar just because. I mean, the car sounds the the like you, you, when they did Le Mans and, and all the the testing and stuff. You really got sucked in. I went to the Dolby Theater to see it, so I my my fucking chair was rumbling the whole nice. the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. Like it, like to me to me it was amazing. Um, I this is one of the categories where I I saw every single movie on the list, and yeah, I, to me I would have to give it to Ford versus Ferrari. Awesome. How about you, Sean? Yeah, yeah. For me, it was definitely 1917. Um, but I, at the same time, I was, you know, Ford versus Ferrari was the other one that I kind of put, you know, but um, I'm going to go with 1917. Um, okay. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, achievement in sound mixing then uh, being Ad Astra, Ford versus Ferrari, Joker, 1917, and then Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh. Uh, where do we sit on this one? Um, Let's- this one, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to choose Joker. And uh, this is because this is, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. Both of them, it's it, for me, it's again, it's between Joker and 1917. Um, and both delivered like incredible pacing and their usage of sound. It's when to be silent, when to use the atmosphere and the score. Um, of course, your guys is uh, one point about the whole staircase thing. Well, you know, I, that's what I was, I didn't want to interrupt earlier, but I wonder if that's where this more comes into play is with the sound mixing um, is whether like when they made that choice to use that song, um, if that, that, if, if that would fall heavily or way into the, the sound mixing more than the original score. Cause I mean, it should, yeah, it should. You so, had, you had, <laughs> An infinite amount of songs to choose from for that scene. Some originally written by beautiful composers that you could have put in there. And like, man, I was, I, I felt like I was at a 1993 Bulls game. <laughs> <laughs> like, honest to God. Uh, so, but for, for me, again, this is a category where I think all the movies that are nominated are all worthy. And I would like to see them give it to to a movie that is going to be overshadowed by some great film so if ford versus ferrari doesn't win um the other one i'd like to maybe see it win this one if not ad astra again is is a film that gets nominated for best picture best actor in a year that isn't 2019 that was another i thought phenomenal phenomenally shot film uh greatly made and and it just wasn't good enough to make yeah. the cut in a year that was just great for film. So, man, they hand it they hand it to Ad Astra, Ford versus Ferrari. I'm gonna be actually really happy. Um, I think the Joker in 1917 have plenty of other opportunities to win to win awards for for other things they did really well. Um, but if I had to, if I was a Vegas betting man again, I think they give it to 1917. Yeah. I'll save best. Well, uh, let's let's move on. Uh, let's keep rolling through these categories. Next one being achievement in production design. Uh, our, our nominees here are The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. 
I I went with 1917 in this one. If for nothing else, I, I did some reading and they built a freaking mile of those trenches that were in that. Like, I mean, I almost wonder if uh, they left some of that stuff intact and it's going to be kind of like a tourist site to go visit or whatnot. Because, I mean, they put a lot of work into the actual production. I mean, this was this was not a movie that just fully relied on green screen. They 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 went to town on setting up this movie. So I, I think this this one I'm almost it's almost a clean sweep for me. I mean, Parasite yeah. was originally um, on my list because they also built like a tank for um, the whole the whole lower t- area was built like. Any, anyways, I don't want to spoil too much or get into that, but it's just 1917 for me. It's I, I think it's a clear winner. So I I did this is one of the movies that I'm really upset I didn't get to see, but I because I I've, I was fascinated by the way they did this movie and I wanted to learn more about how they kind of did that made it seem that it was a one shot movie. Um, and I watched a couple I could watch a couple of things where they showed how they made that movie. And yeah, the 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 level that went into these sets and these the the production the trench and the detail that they put in and they put it in 360 degrees so that way they could follow truly with that one shot design I, I i don't know if any other movie put in that level of work so as i agree with both of you the the so for me one of the best things about 1917 was was how it subtly highlighted trench warfare cuz after world war 1 we went away from trench warfare that was that was kind of the last i mean ken you can tell me if i'm wrong but i don't Not remember i don't remember <laughs> world war 2 having having many more trenches in, nope involved. that was that was the uh, yeah that was the end of of that style of warfare for sure so so the fact that they were able to highlight trench warfare in such a subtle manner but have it be such a big feature of the film i thought was phenomenal but again i'm going to have to give it to once upon a time just because hollywood loves them some hollywood and they literally shut down hollywood boulevard reverted all the buildings back to 1960 1960 cars like it was a big deal to shut down hollywood for a tarantino movie and then just i think they did a really good job of of rewinding time in in downtown hollywood for this film so as as good as the trench warfare aspect was it was just a bunch of bulldozers digging holes i mean it's not like it's not like they had a, a thousand grips out there digging with two foot sho- shovels like like they did in the actual war pretty sure they just had a bunch of bulldozers out there digging and, and they did a good job of, of recreating it um the logistics it had to go through to shut down hollywood and the pain in the ass it was to the citizens of la <laughs> like i could only imagine so i i think i think once upon a time, once upon a time wins this one for sure you know that's that's another thing too is back to your point about just this being such a phenomenal year for films is I mean, once upon a time, I mean, Quentin Tarantino is my favorite. And the fact that I just, as we're going down this list, I mean, I, I, I chose a bunch of other things over him. Like, it's just insane because that's just how great this year was. Yeah. It, I mean, we'll, we'll go deep into that once we get towards the best pictures and, and actresses. But I mean, if, if you didn't see a good movie this year, you need to get the fuck out of the house, man. <laughs> like, like there was so, so many good films. And I mean, if, if all you can brag about was seeing Endgame and Rise of no, Skywalker, you, you can stay home. Like, <laughs> Net, Netflix did all right for me. It's all right. Still <laughs> you can stay home. A good amount. And yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on to uh, next category. We'll go over the screenplay categories. Uh, first one being adapted screenplay uh, with The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Woman, and Two Popes. I I, I think Joker is going to win this one hands down. Um, maybe you know I wouldn't mind seeing Jojo Rabbit take it, but I this is I mean that that Joker screenplay was was something else. I mean that. If 1917 and Paris and a bunch of these other things didn't come out this year, I mean, I was when Joker, yeah, I, I, pretty early on, I was like, oh, Joker is definitely the movie of the year, hands down, no competition. I mean, or scarce competition, but no, it's yeah. So I'm, I'm going with Joker on this one. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the criteria to, you know, like we don't get the screenplays to actually read through the sheets of paper and then watch the movie and and 
compare, you know, adaptations. Um, so I don't know exactly it's not, um, how they how they judge that. It's just basically because Joker's not an original. Um, you know, it's 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 a it's a it's an IP that's been around forever, right? Like the character. So that's why I think it had to fall under adapted. But I, it's not really. This is this is not directly as far as I know, right? This isn't like this isn't taken from a book or anything else. Yeah. It's just, they just gave this one. They put this one in the adapted category because the character has been around. Is is what I was imagining, or I thought at least. Um, and it comes yeah. from you know comics and this and that. Yeah, um, I could see Little Women getting it um, in in today's climate. I could see Irishmen getting it because they love Scorsese. You know, like it's, there's there's a lot of like bias when it when it comes into who we actually think is going to get the award. But it, in this scenario, I have to root for Joker. Like I have to just root for them in in this in this. Just because, like you said, it was it was so well done, and if they they're basing it on the fact that the Joker is an original comic book character, so he was adapted for this movie, then I find it hard to believe that even the movies I didn't see adapted any any character or real life story or novel better than than what they did with the Joker. I can't. I, I find it hard to believe. Yeah, we'll see. I, I think uh, let's see if they can withhold from uh, from giving it to to Greta Gerwig, who you know. It, many people would say it could have been a snub uh and we'll talk about that maybe later but uh you know her name popping up here in this category i could see her getting it even though little women's been done before she she put her own spin on it and uh we'll see if, if she sneaks away with it so now original screenplay yep and with that one we've got knives out written by rj your favorite womp, womp. Uh, <laughs> marriage story <laughs> 1917 once upon a time in hollywood and parasite I hope actually so so I'm kind of almost rooting for Parasite to win this one just because that would give it some uh American legitimacy and not just say well it was just a good foreign film if they could add, if they could pull out original screenplay now it's like no it was just a good film fuck or, you know like go go do a movie and read words at the bottom of the screen you lazy pieces of shit like this was a good film. It wasn't just a good foreign film. No, it was a good film on the world stage. Go see it. So I, I'm kind of hoping that they they win this one to legitimize the film because it was that good. It was a good film. It just happened to be in a language I don't know. You know, like it, it like doesn't didn't take anything away from the movie. Yeah, this was a a tough category for me because I mean. Everything on this list, uh, you know, I, I know obviously Steve felt different about Knives Out, but I everything on this list I enjoyed. And a big part of what comes into judging a movie for me is the writing. And so, yeah, but it's for me, it's it's Parasite. And I, I really think Parasite deserves this. This, I mean, yeah, it's just I, I felt like Parasite was was probably the best written story out of all of these, but it's it, in some of these, I mean, it's by a, a freaking hair. I mean, once upon a time, I mean, I would, I will I'm, say like after freshly watching marriage story that I, I think it's one of the weaker films in all of the, all of the categories, but coming from a, fa- a divorced family, watching my dad go through two, div- two divorces, um, it it really it felt real like it it did feel like like i whoever wrote that movie it's like man who hurt you like oh, it, it i mean it, the the director you know you know and it and it does chronicle i mean there's a reason why it's a, it was a you know a theater producer and stuff like that it does chronicle his own marriage story to some degree you know so so his previous so, marriage story he's currently married to to greta. To, to, to greta really yeah, yeah. that's interesting Um, so like, I can't, I don't think the, the actual screenplay of 1917, um, deserves it. I don't, I can't remember any monologues or anything like that, that really stood out with me for, for me, it was more of a, a masterpiece visually. Um, once upon a time, it was a long movie, some really long dialogue scenes, but again, like nothing prolific sticks out, uh, knives out. I guess they, they it's a contender because they 
that movie's all over the place. Like there, it was a murder mystery, so they were, you know, I'm purposely trying to divert your attention to different things, and 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 so it was probably written more in depth than than a lot of the other films. But again, I didn't enjoy it. I know you did, Sean. But I, I, from from the post in the cantina, I wasn't the only one that that had the gripes that I had. So it wasn't just like a exclusive to my biases. It was, I, there was other people that felt the same way that, that I did about how they, they structured that film. So I don't feel too bad about it. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think parasite was just so well written. Um, the story was very unique. It was, it was very kind of gripping. Um, give it to parasite, man. All right. Let's keep chugging along here. Uh, Next one's going to be best animated feature film of the year. And uh, we've got How to Train Your Dragon, uh, the third one, The Hidden World, I Lost My Body, Claws, Missing Link, and Toy Story 4. Yeah, only one I saw was How to Train Your Dragon. All right, Sean, save us. <laughs> yes, all right. So I Lost My Body was was probably my personal favorite. Um, that That film was... Yeah, I saw it on Christmas Eve and late at night too. I just randomly threw it on, like, because it popped up and it just seemed to tickle my fancy. I didn't imagine that it would actually be this critically acclaimed and, and be nominated for an Oscar. But, anyways, it's a great film, but it's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's in subtitles too. So I'm I'm really gonna say that Claws is, is has the best chance. And um, but Claws is also a great story. I mean, it was. You know, I'm I'm not one to watch these things. I don't have a kid. You know, I don't, I'm not married, so it's like I'm not really into these like uh, something that's. But this was not. Claws was a story that I think was translated well for like a young audience, but it really had a bunch of adult things and uh, very subtle. And I feel like they did it in such a way where you can sit down and watch this with your kids. But I mean, if you're watching this as an adult, there's some there's some subtle some subtext and and things like that going on and you're like whoa i mean it's it was it was a really good story um so yeah i think claws wins this one hold on so if you watch i lost my body on christmas eve when the hell did you watch claws i also watched, <laughs> i watched it on christmas eve as well ah yeah, okay well, yeah <laughs> that now makes sense all right well uh we're gonna have to take your uh your recommendation here on on claws the only one i've seen was toy story 4 uh, which was good, but not as good as the others. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, and make that the uh, the Nerd Cantina official uh, recommend- <laughs> recommendation there, or prediction there. All right. And then uh, next one we have is, uh, was it Achievement of Visual Effects? Yep. All right. I lost my list. So Achievement of Visual Effects nominees are Avengers Endgame, The Irishman, The Lion King, 1917 and Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. All right. Anybody not giving it to Endgame? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of just have to give it to Endgame, I guess, just because of how much green screen they do, how many people are wearing those dotted suits. Um, Hulk's character was shit, but he looked great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with The Irishman. Just because this is the only category, I think this film has a chance at winning. And uh, they did do that de aging thing, and um, and it's a it's a freaking it's a film, you know, it's supposed to be not based on a nonfiction story, even though people say it was fabricated and this and that. And there's some arguments there, but still, it hits all those notes where I feel like the Oscars they just they're going to cream themselves over it. Um, yeah, I, I feel like yeah. But- haven't, haven't like YouTube deep fakers actually like shown that they can improve the de-aging technique used by Netflix? Like it really wasn't even on par with current like YouTube people's technical ability. Uh, so I, that's the I think it was good. How much money they spent? They got. They got it, it, it is. I also, I you also can go see in, on YouTube Wars where they've being, improved it significantly. I also see this one being the one that Star Wars may win just for for being able to put Carrie Fisher in that movie so much. You know, and I, I don't think it deserves it, but I mean, they Hollywood mourned the kid death of Carrie Fisher pretty pretty heavily. Um, 
I, mean, I think yeah. none of them. This is this is one that I think just should go to Endgame if it's going to be fair. I get it's not a critically acclaimed movie, but when you talk about visual effects, you got th- over three hours of everything on a grand epic scale of of tracking hundreds of digitally created and, images and, I mean, and they people do it the and best, right? creatures I mean, going. You got in. you got Brolin as Thanos. You got Hulk. You got people that are literally their entire essence on the film is is computer generated and your imagination is is completely you know just hooked to these characters because they do look so real they look so believable that there's not a moment you know that was there was a few films last year that i just couldn't get into because the visual effects were horrible um that that will smith movie i can't remember the name of it was just gemini man yeah yeah gemini man they did they did his double so shittily that you couldn't. You, I couldn't get into the movie because every time his younger self was on screen, it would just look like trash. So it just it it t- put a big distaste in in my mouth for the rest of the movie. Towards Endgame and and all these Marvel movies, they do it so well that you your your imagination blends with the movie seamlessly. Uh, and if they get an award for that, you know, good for them. Yeah, and Hulk was in you know Smart Hulk or whatever. He was in Hulk mode the whole time. Like so that was. I mean, I, I definitely, uh, what's it on the Rogan podcast? I remember talking with Robert Downey Jr. They talked about how Ruffalo was having to, I guess he had like a PVC pipe. Yeah. 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 Like they, they hold a, they hold a tennis ball up (laughs) where the head would actually be. So when they're doing their lines, they know they'll look up at the tennis ball and they just got Mark Ruffalo shouting at their chest. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So they definitely put in a lot of work for that. Yeah. Yeah, so give him a, give him a shiny right. thing. All right, next one. Uh, achievement in costume design with uh, with the nominees being Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Woman, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So I think the only ones I didn't see on this one were Little Women and Irishman. Uh, I've been meaning to get to Irishman, man, but to take up three hours of my home time, like fuck! It, it took me four days to watch it, <laughs> just little bits at a time. You know, That's I think again, this this goes to either Once Upon a Time because Hollywood loves Hollywood. Um, could go to Little Women just because this this movie's gonna get overshadowed, and I don't think they want to piss off the the Me Too crowd. But I almost kind of want to give it to Jojo Rabbit. Um, I thought Jojo Rabbit was a good film. I loved kind of what they did with some of these costumes. Um. You know the the paper the paper uniform was was hilarious to me. Yeah. Uh, that there there were some things in that movie that that were really great and and the balls to to have a movie set in you know Nazi Germany and have it play out the way that it does in Jojo Rabbit I think is just amazing to to even take on a project like this. And it was done really well. So I, I'm rooting for Jojo Rabbit, but I think they give it to Once Upon a Time. Yeah, Once Once Upon a Time was my pick. Yeah, I just... I, I thought, how was the how were the wardrobes, though, in Little Women? Because that is a period piece. And they do love to give these say, awards they're to give period it to Little women. pieces. That's, that's, they always give it to Yeah, them. that's what I was going to say. Is, um, I, honestly, though, they're probably going to give it to Little Women. But at the same time, I also think it is well-deserved. There was a couple things with that film like I wasn't a fan of little woman. Um, it, it just wasn't a film for me, but there was a couple things that I noticed that I thought were really great. And that was one of them was the costume designs. I mean, and I, obviously I didn't, you know, check out the making of and the behind the scenes, but I'm sure a lot of work went into those costumes and they were great. Like, <clears throat> yeah, I don't think, I don't think you can be upset with, with anybody that wins this award. Irishman was a period piece. Joker was had its, you know, they had this tone that they had to carry throughout the film. So everything, you know, was was kind of gray washed and, and whatnot. Again, I, I made my case for Jojo. Um, and then Little Women and Once Upon a Time are also period pieces. You know, you got to capture the essence of that time period. So whoever did it best is going to win the award, um, probably with some some Hollywood bias in there. And I think the bias lands on Once Upon a Time. But like you said, could easily just go to Little Women. All right. Well, let's uh, let's pick up and move on to, uh, to the next one, and that's uh, Achievement in Film Editing. Uh, we've got Ford vs. Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, and Parasite. 
So for me, I, I went with Ford versus Ferrari on this one. Um, it was, I don't know. A lot of these films had great structure. It was a really tough category. Um, but this is the one other place where I could see maybe Ford versus Ferrari taking the win and they did get the BAFTA, but that's not always, you know, doesn't always mean anything. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I picked Ford versus Ferrari also as well. Um, the editing with the racing, you know what I mean? It really, oh, yeah. it really sucks you in to, to, to those races. Um, it, I, I think overall, over all the other films on the list that I think, um, the editing played a, a bigger role into making that film better. Um, you know, I'm surprised 1917 isn't on this list to, to give you the truth, even though it didn't take much editing, the editing skills that were used to make that film great were, were top. Yeah, I almost wonder is like, because they, this is the thing. And that's why I don't understand why it's not part of, and this maybe, maybe yet we don't understand this category well enough, but they made it look like it was, you know, one or two. One, sh- yeah. One shot. Like, and so I like, I would think that they should get it for editing, but at the same time, I'm wondering like, you know, because they had to do a lot to get that and set that up. But at the same time, are they, they want to award people who have more takes because they have more shots and they had to go through it. Yeah. More. They're, they're cutting in yeah. way more so and in and out. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know whether you give it to somebody that, that has to do a lot more cutting and a lot more splicing, or you give it to a film that had to do minimal cutting and splicing, but made it so seamless that it didn't look like there was, they ever said cut once during the entire shoot you know so yeah. um but with that said yeah i i give it to ford or ferrari just because the the way that they had to edit these these racing scenes because you know it's it's so fast paced um I, I i thought that movie was great it was it was a phenomenal movie well and, and what you were talking about with the one shot and stuff let's see if uh if that wins the day in the next category which is achievement in cinematography which Again, we get the Irishman, Joker, the Lighthouse for the first time. I think we talked about them, nineteen seventeen, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, you have to give the nineteen seventeen. I'm sorry, you yeah, have to nineteen seventeen. You have to. As much as I love these other movies, like you have to give it to nineteen seventeen. It was visually one of the most stunning movies I've seen in years. Like, I think a lot just... of a lot of natural lighting too, which yeah, you know, is is not not easy to do with 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 any kind of film, even taking a photo. People, I think, can understand how difficult it is, uh, the difference between using natural lighting and regular or having light set up. What are you talking about? We got Instagram filters now. Don't you know every, <laughs> every, every, everybody could be an Instagram model if you just swipe through those filter, uh, those filter lenses enough. Oh, man. Well, again, it, 1970 is just a movie that, that I want to see. And, and definitely you should see uh, some of the YouTube documentaries like that variety did and stuff showing but like the lighting and stuff that they needed like it just shows them doing like rehearsals walking through the trenches and just preparing because a lot of their scenes would be six seven minutes straight because they again didn't cut it trying to do the one shot and they would like a cloud would be coming and they would have to wait until another similar cloud would come compared to what they shot earlier so they'd have to wait for very specific timing so they'd just be rehearsing not running film at all going through these things until wait and they're like all right when this cloud goes away we're gonna go in Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's go and they start running <laughs> through the trenches because they had to li- limit themselves based off of trying to keep that continuity. Really crazy. There, uh, there were just so many it. stunning scenes in 1917 where where there's no dialogue, there's no action, but the the scene that they put forward of you following these characters, it, I mean, it was just stunning. The, the the river scene. I don't want to give anything away, but like, there's a river scene that was just visually stunning. Him, him walking through the forest, finding a, a different platoon. Um, that scene was just visually like I can't say enough good things about about this film. It was it was phenomenal. All right, all right. Let's move. So we've got our last. Now these are the big categories uh, that we'll we'll finish up here on, and let's see uh, see where it takes us. So we'll go first one with uh, with performance by an actor in a supporting role. Uh, and what we have is we have Tom Hanks from A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Anthony Hopkins in The Two Popes, Al Pacino in The Irishman, 
Joe Pesci in The Irishman, and then Brad Pitt in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, Brad Pitt, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, he's never never won an Oscar. Um, but besides, let me first just say, I mean, his performance was phenomenal. It was one of the things that stood out. And I think early on in the year, you know, I might, we might have even had this conversation Steve, I, I don't know if we, I just I know it was already in the talk. So by several people that after that, everybody was talking about Brad's performance and Leo's performance. Um, those were the two that really it was a master class in acting. Yeah, it, it really was. It was a master class in acting. Um, I so I just don't know how these judges um, weigh into these things. You know, they always love some Tom Hanks. And in a story about Mr. Rogers, it's a tearjerker. You know, you don't know if they give it to them. They they love some Pacino and some Pesci in a Scorsese film. So who knows if they if they give it to them? I didn't. I wanted to watch Two Popes last night. I didn't get a chance to with uh, the Super Bowl party and, and just being exhausted from so dealing I've with seen kids. Two Popes and I, Anthony Hopkins. I think is he is acting phenomenally in that movie. It, the, his performance is great. I mean, the one thing, the only negative thing I'll say about Pitt's performance is it's basically like his, his best Matthew McConaughey impression. Like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And is that that hard? You know what I mean? Like, is that that challenging of an actor? I mean, he hit all his points. He played off Leo perfectly it, like his character was great. Like I'm not trying to take anything away from him, but as some of these other people were portraying more p- characters that were more out of the box of what a normal human or their themselves is. I think Brad Pitt's character was the closest to what an actual Brad Pitt is or, yeah, you know, like I said, it, like he he basically did his best Matthew McConaughey impression, and I mean, I think we could all play McConaughey for a couple hours if we were really forced to. It was funny. Brad Pitt himself said he's all, yeah, you know, I played a shirtless stoner who has problems with his wife, and he's all not too hard to channel that one, which is, you know, it was kind of funny <laughs> because obviously people know he had issues with Angelina Jolie, and yeah, Brad Pitt's a stoner. Yeah, honestly, I thought he was just as good in Ad Astra as he was in Once Upon a Time. I really do. And it's totally two totally different characters, two totally different tones, different deliveries. And I would almost, if he was going to win an acting award this year, I would almost give it to him for Ad Astra just because, like I said, it's not, I don't think it was out of the box for him to play the character he did in Once Upon a Time. One thing. So, so yeah, this, to me, this one's a coin flip on who. Yeah. One thing I will add is that everybody in this category, except for Brad Pitt has already won an Oscar. Um, you know, and Pesci is pretty much retired, Uh, you know, seeing how they've dogged Leo for two decades. I don't think they give a fuck about who has one and who doesn't. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, and Pitt's been playing the political game. He's been going around doing his campaigning and all that. And, getting people to talk about things and I'm sure helping sell, you know, more tickets and whatnot. So, yeah, though these are going to, there's some interesting categories that I'm going to be really like watching closely to see who wins. And this is definitely one of them because all the other actors are, are Oscar winners and, and have done great things and are playing roles that are not closely related to who they are as people. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't know. I I still think you give it to Pitt just because of the amount of of dialogue they were delivering in in single shots and and how well they did the chemistry on screen came off. Like it was it was amazing. It was like I said, it was, you want to become an actor and you want to work on your craft. You watch that movie religiously. All right. Well, uh Let's keep uh, keep this moving. The major categories here, and uh, just go to the other side. So, performance by an actress in a supporting role, and uh, we have Kathy Bates in Richard Jewell, Laura Dern in The Marriage Story, Scarlett Johansson in Jojo Rabbit, Florence Pugh in Little Women, and Margot Robbie in Bom- Bombshell. I uh, I will say flat out, take take Margot Robbie off the list. Like, yeah, yeah, I I I love Margot Robbie. You know, like I mean, especially I think well, she was good in it. Like I, I don't think the performance was bad, but that's to me that's that's a hashtag Me Too nomination right there. 
Um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm picking Scarlet. You know, like I feel like really, but it, honestly, um, I I feel like Laura Dern's probably gonna win this one. See, I'm I I could see someone from Little Women, like, like Little Women when Pew, I think that's it. Uh, she yeah. should have. This is where I guess I should bring. She should have been nominated for Midsummer. Her performance in Midsummer was, but I mean that would have been a leading role. So and that was a tough category. I I don't see Laura Dern winning it for Marriage Story. I don't know. Like her, like that. Her role as the the divorce lawyer. You know what I mean? Like she she played that exact same role in that HBO TV series. Um, shit, the one with Nicole Kidman and and. I watch it either way, but it, it was basically the same, same character, just minorly twisted. And, and I just don't think that, that her character needed, you know, like, again, the same thing I said with Pitt, it's, it's not out of the box enough. Um, you know, so I, I don't see her winning it. I do see them trying to give little women stuff, especially in a female based category. Uh, Margot Robbie was, was good in the movie, but it wasn't some like moving, kind of performance i honestly my what who i'm rooting for is kathy bates and richard jewell um i think i'm probably the only one here that might have seen that movie she plays richard jewell's mother of the guy who gets accused in the media of bombing and everything and she gives a a monologue speech that she does for for the news at some point trying to defend her son and you really feel a mother's pain in that monologue like it was like you really feel a, a mother, you know, hurting for her child and pleading to society to 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 give her her son the benefit of the doubt and like yeah, it was she she played she had a really good role in that Richard Jewell. I, I'm I'm rooting for her. I'm rooting for Kathy Bates. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I you know I don't I don't I don't think I'd be upset if she uh, she took that one in. She's she's incredible. Um. And I, I don't know if she's ever won any, so. Yeah, she, I, I want right. to say she won for Misery, didn't she? I think she was just nominated. We can double check that, but. Yeah, yeah I mean, just picture Kathy, Ga- Kathy Bates at the top of her game. And, and you know, that's really all you need to, to say about it. But I, I do think they give it to Florence Pugh out of, out of just the fact that. You know they've been getting shit for, since nomination day about about <clears throat> inclusion and things like that. So I don't know. I don't know where this one lands. <laughs> All right. So now the uh, the major uh, categories: the actor in a leading role, and uh, we're looking at it, Antonio Banderas from Pain and Glory, Leo from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Adam Driver in Marriage Story, Joaquin Phoenix in The Joker, and then Jonathan Price in The Two Popes. And all great actors, all great performances. Um, the only one that I didn't see uh, is uh, Jonathan Price and Antonio Banderas. Um, Adam Driver was really good in Marriage Story. I, I I think they didn't do his character very well, but his his performance was phenomenal. I love me some Leo, and and man, the, some of those scenes in Once Upon a Time, the trailer where he has the breakdown. <laughs> Yeah, man, the trailer where he has the breakdown, the 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 scene where he's actually filming the uh, the western scene, and the little girl comes up to him and yes. tells him that's the greatest piece. That's all. That's part like of, a seven yeah. minute shot, uncut, focused on Leo's face. He's playing two characters, so he has to play the character that is in the movie, and then he has to play the character that the character's acting as in the movie. So he has to play two different characters in that scene unedited just total dialogue was phenomenal yet i still give it to joaquin man i yeah, gotta yeah, yeah i gotta give it to joaquin man same and joaquin i think Phoenix. i think that oscars always rewards um physical sacrifice in this category so if you're an actor and you lose 50 pounds and you look like an ethiopian to do your performance <laughs> you're you're damn near guaranteed an oscar Yeah, I mean, I, I would go Joker. I've seen several of these movies. I haven't seen all of them, but uh, well, you've seen he's, Once he's, Upon a Time, and you you've seen Joker, and um, I've seen Two Popes, and, uh, and while they're all great performances, I, I don't think there's a single one that the movie hinges so much on on 
on the the actual performance of of the individual who is embodying a that's a also that a good doesn't, point. Yeah, that doesn't that's also resemble a good point. doesn't resemble in any way the 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 actual human being. Right? Yeah. So if Leo person. slacks a little bit, Pitt could pick him up. There's a lot of other really good. But Joker, roles. yeah, Joker was the one that 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 was it held the whole movie, right? Like, yeah, yeah. That's what you're yeah, saying, Joaquin. Right? If Joaquin doesn't deliver for two hours straight, that movie's a failure. Yeah. So yeah, so, I, I think that's one that we're all for sure in agreement on. All right. So then let's see on uh, on the lady side the performance by an actress in a leading role. We have uh, is Cynthia Revo in Harriet, uh, Scarlett Johansson in Marriage Story. I, I don't even. Ronan. In <laughs> <Little> <laughs> so Soris. Yeah, how do you say that name? I wow. Uh, Charlize Theron in Bombshell, and then Renee Zellweger in Judy. You can tell how much time we have to prepare for these episodes by our name pronunciation. <clears throat> so Renee, like in Judy, and it just I, I yeah I, again. Hollywood loves Hollywood, and she did become Judy Garland. She did, and she's cleaning up everything going into this. It'd be hard to imagine she doesn't get. Yeah. It. I mean, I liked Charlie's in Bombshell. I thought she did a great job acting. I, she, she did kind of, you know, again, you you know who Megyn Kelly is. Like everybody knew who Megyn Kelly was. You've seen her on TV for so long, to to have to become that person for an entire movie. That's that's got to be a huge challenge, you know. Um, so so I I have total respect for for that role, but I just. Yeah, I don't think you give it over a uh, Renee Zellweger who, from what I'm told, I, I did want to go see it. I, I didn't get a chance. I can't remember what movie I did see that week. Um, they She totally embodied Judy Garland, and Hollywood loves, loves Judy Garland. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, maybe we get into uh, a little debate here uh, a with the uh, the achievement in directing and uh, the nominees being Martin Scorsese for The Irishman, Todd Phillips for The Joker, Sam Mendes for 1917, Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and then uh, Bong Joon Ho for Parasite. All right, go ahead, kick it off, Sean. All right, so for for me it was Parasite. Um, that yeah, I, I I think Parasite takes this one, um, but at the same time. Uh, pretty much any of these could win. I, I would just, I'd say that the Irishman was, was like to me, the weaker out of all the ones that are here. Um, this is the first time that a South Korean has been nominated for this category. This is a really tough category. They're only allowed five nominations. Um, and so, you know, I think one of the big, uh, uproars was people saying Greta should have got the directing nomination here. And honestly, I mean, if you look at this, not against these movies, yeah. man. Like you get, like what the fuck? Like maybe, maybe, maybe the Irishman, thing. but like Martin Scorsese's a shoe in, so that's you know that's that's the one spot maybe she could, yeah. <laughs> but I, I just I wouldn't say that Little Woman was a better movie than the Irishman, but I, the thing, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's that's what makes it so so kind of tough with with this year. Um, and like, again, a topic that we've talked about in the Cantina group and personally is, you know, like with what Stephen King got shit for of saying that, look, I don't, I don't look at male, female, black, white when I'm critiquing art, like, and, and no one should honestly, you know? So when you look at, at the films that came out last year, these are, these are some of the best films of the decade. You know what I mean? The last year of, of the 2010s, they put out some of the best films of the decade all in one year. How do you, how, you know, it, why, why are you mad that Little Women didn't get nominated, but you're not mad that, that Ford versus Ferrari didn't get nominated? You know, like there's, there's, there's other directors that put out high quality film that aren't on this list. And you can't just be mad that the girl didn't get put on the list. You, if like it, it should be about the content. Little Woman picked up six Oscar nominations, which was more than some of those other films, like I think Ford versus Ferrari, um, that we talked about. And 
you know, it's, that was a, it's, it's an adaption of a 1994 movie. There was a mini series. Like I, I just, I don't even, you know, I, if this wasn't a woman, I mean, yeah. How hard is it to direct a movie that you've seen three times? Yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, like, like when you look at it that way, like you, you have, Three, what right three other renditions or two just two the tv show and the other movie? there's just a i think a tv miniseries okay. and, a, and a movie so yeah but there's yeah. three versions and, well and then you have the book so yeah. so you you have you have three different renditions of this to to reference to well i like what they did in this part i like how they did this here i'm going to take the best of this film i'm going to take the best part of this book i'm going to take the best part of this tv series and i'm going to make a new updated version is that as hard as you know directing a 1917 a joker a once upon a time in hollywood no to me it's not when you have that kind of that the, that kind of reference those kind of references to go back and build on to me in in a year like this, you you you're not on the list. Sorry about it. And also, the last little thing I will say about this is, you know, I, doing some reading and whatnot. I mean, the real issue is definitely, if anything, if you really want to point fingers or complain, you know, we need to hire more female directors and give them more movies like this or whatnot, like the movies that are going to be nominated. For the most part, they're f- women are not hired or is seen as directors as often and when they are they're given you know light comedy that is an light, argument I'll and support. light dramas yeah and independent an films things that the oscars aren't going to give attention to and so whether wh- that's 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 the argument everybody yeah. should be championing is that should we be giving women more opportunity yes yes should we be giving them awards because they're women no like, like and, I want to see more women directors so they have more opportunity to put out good quality films that could possibly get nominated. But to say, well, since we only have 12 predominant women directors, one of those should always be on the list. No, fuck that. Yeah, and fuck only that. five women have ever been nominated. Greta was one of them for Lady Bird 2018. And uh, she lost to The Shape of Water, which I, I thought was a freaking phenomenal film. So that was fair. Um, and then the only woman to ever win was Catherine Bigelow in 2010 with Hurt Locker. Yeah, I was to say Hurt Locker. And Hurt Locker was a fucking phenomenal movie. But, you know, yeah, I could movie. see some women making the argument, well, okay, well, the one woman that did win, you know, she put out a movie for men, whatever. It's, let's, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but if, if women want more opportunities... Men are the predominant moviegoers. You're going to have to make movies for men. Like, sorry about it. Like, like there are harsh realities that you're just going to have to fucking accept. And if you want more women to be nominated for making good film, they're going to have to direct movies that have male themes, you know, male, male leads, uh, or, or men driven stories, you know, like, sorry, Sorry, that's who likes to go see movies. It's a business. Nobody's just going to make a movie for for the sake of making a movie. They make a movie to make money. And who are the who are the major moviegoers in this country? It's the mostly the eighteen to fifty year old male audience. So if you want more opportunity, don't say I'm not going to direct this movie because it's too male. Like, well, well that's, sorry that's, about it. That, like, that's the thing too. Is it's not. It's more of a, at least what I was reading is that it's not, w- the women aren't turning these jobs down. Like, no, I'm not, not saying even, they are, but, it, but like, opportunity to be hired for those roles. Like, to, but that, her, that hurt locker argument would be yeah, yeah. like, you know, an argument to say, well, I need to turn down a hurt locker so I can direct a, a little women instead. It's like, no, no, direct I, the best movie, direct, a, d- take the best opportunity you have. If it happens to be a hurt locker, take that fucking opportunity. If it happens to be a little women, then, then take that. But it shouldn't just be, the 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 gender specified theme um of the movie should not be your determining factor it should always be quality and uh and i was just, i would say yeah. what, what were what were your choices for this movie, for this one for the director oh Sean, you said parasite, parasite right yeah what would you steve i Man, it's, this is really hard for me. Whether I give it to Todd Phillips for Joker or Sam Mendes for 1917, I 
Honest to God, I give it to Sam Mendes because I think Todd Phillips is the one who picked that fucking song. <laughs> <laughs> and that's oh. in, 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 in two perfect fucking movies for me. That's that's what that's what breaks it. Right. Is is one small choice that the director made one small choice because because these uh. movies, these movies are neck and neck with how fucking well they were. They were directed. Uh, honest to God, they were they were neck and neck. And if you're making me pick one, then there's only one movie that I sat in a theater and thought, why? And that so, was that was that scene. There's there's I haven't seen 1917 or Parasite, so I, I'm I'm only going to paint why I think Tough Helps has, should at least you know be strongly considered to to actually win this, uh, and it's because the directing choices and the the, the way he went with the story lends it to where, you know, we, we talked about it, where there's greater analysis to it. There's greater understanding to, to, to go into what is real in the movie, what is not, what is uh, all of the choices that were made in there and the artistic direction that, that it ended up going. It, it plays out so differently based off of every individual person's experience and the way they watch it, the way they interpret things. And I think that it is it, Incredibly unique in, in directing, and that's uh, and I, I I like it. For see, that with, with nineteen seventeen, I really felt like there, like I was tethered to those characters. Like there was not a point in that movie where I did not feel that I was not emotionally tied to those to those characters throughout the entire film. It was just like i f- i really felt like they were pulling me along with them through that journey and it was it was just perfectly done and and if i have to i have to pick one like i said i just there to me there was one bad choice in joker and if that's the one if that's the thing that that defines who i pick then so be it so i give i give it to 1917 and i guess besides you know i already chose parasite but just to touch on both your points 1917, I mean, Sam gets, I think, big credit for just basically choosing, uh, copying some Alfred Hitchcock techniques and whatnot to basically find those perfect little placeholder areas of where to rest and stop each take um, so you can make it look like one seamless cut, you know? Uh, so th- that, that, that plays into that part as well. But then with Joker in general, I mean, just the fact that Todd Phillips found a way to kind of almost – to take the superhero genre, which is, you know, and, and make it into like almost like an art house type film. I mean, a lot of those, these themes and styles and everything that was done in this movie, it's not that these things have never been done before, but it's just never been done really with that genre on, on the big screen that well and <clears throat> translated that well. And the directing, you know, he gets the credit for that for sure. So. All right. Final category. So, best motion picture of the year, the nominees being Ford vs. Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. So, um, do we want to go down the list and just give a couple of quick thoughts about the movies and then give our picks and end it? Or do we want to... Sure, like, how, do how do you want to do this? So... Ford vs. Ferrari, again, I guess we said earlier, we, we kind of talked on it. Any other any other year, this wins Best Picture. I, it honestly does for me. It was it was one of my favorite movies of the year. It, it was so good. Um, I highly suggest that everybody goes out and rents this movie or, or buys it and watches it. It is worth all your time, all your money that, that you want to put into it. So I... I I thought it was phenomenal. So I'm glad it made the list. I'm glad it at least made the nomination. I don't see it being the movie that wins, but I, I loved it as a film. Yeah, same. And I, I agree exactly with your point too, is that this is just a really tough year and this is, uh, yeah, like I just, the competition this year was insane. I mean, again, we're, we're down to the last category here and I'm telling you right now, once upon a time is not my pick and I haven't, so I haven't picked Once Upon a Time, maybe maybe once out of all these. And I mean, 
earlier in the year i would have thought like i would have this this, that film would have been but yeah i walked out i walked out of the theater thinking once upon a time was a shoo-in for best picture and then all these other movies came out i was like holy fuck which just goes to show how how strong the competition was this year how how tough of a year it was and i mean this is another moment too i mean parasite was um nominated for best picture it's the first time a south korean film now people want to complain and say there was a lack of diversity honestly we we had one of the i mean this is this is a huge achievement as far as diversity goes for this category for, for these films for this category for for south korea this is really big for them um at the same time though it's funny it just shows too how how every every when people talk about diversity they shit on the asian community whenever people talk about diversity or talk about <laughs> like racism and stuff like that they treat they treat Asians like they're they're in the white people group. You know what I mean? Like, oh, oh, we we need more diversity. Well, a an Asian film is is nominated for best picture. Oh, oh yeah, but that's Asian. No, that we need more. Time. We need more oh, black yeah. films. We need more. We need more women films. And it's like, damn, like like the the Asians get shit on. You know, when it comes to the diversity argument, quite often. Yeah. So there was it was a great year for diversity in the Oscars, but not the in the buzzword sense of diversity that people want to like. You know, this isn't they want champion. Yeah, exactly. They, they it doesn't fit their agenda, so they're not talking about that. It's because it's right now. I mean, it's all about right. Let's talk about the lack of representation for women, lack of representation for African American. Yeah. Jojo Jojo the Rabbit's nominated. Taika Waititi had a huge role in making that film like i don't know if you know how that name's spelled but he ain't white yeah. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> you know this was yeah it was so i mean and it's and I'm sorry too when you look at this list you know and I, I just i little women's on the list right and i just i i can't believe i mean but this i just i don't see that as a best picture if I, little woman's the one on this whole list that if it won Best Picture, I would seriously, you know, I would question the motives. Yeah, exactly. You'd have to I'd question like, the okay, motives of, was, of, yeah. of award voters. Um, the Irishman, I didn't get a chance to see. Um, you guys, you guys have saw it. it I, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a good movie, but I actually think it's one of the weaker ones on, on the whole, yeah. ca- on the whole category. It, it, the performances are good, but the story doesn't even. F- the story's not that entertaining in the first place the story doesn't even feel all that original it, it it seems a bit done i mean sure we've never done this specific uh it was it was de niro pesci but. and it was so it was the big four of old yeah. hollywood de niro pesci uh pacino and scorsese finally saying hey let's all do one before we die yeah <laughs> it's a, I mean, it, was, it, was, it was a very me, well done exactly what it was it was a very well done movie but I, it's i don't think it should get consideration to actually win this. i think you can agree with me ken like if we take out those names this movie is not even in any oscar nominations right not even yeah you throw not, in yeah. four different actors that put on just as good a performance nobody cares yeah it's yeah. It, this this movie really a lot of the weight comes with who was involved in it and that's just part of it. I mean, it's, you know, that's, that's part of the game whatnot. But uh, yeah, I was, I, I thought it was a, a weaker film from all of those people involved who I usually love. And uh, yeah. So Jojo rabbits on the list. I actually got to go see Jojo rabbit last week. I mean, I'm kind of glad it, it, it got the nomination. It's more than I would have expected after seeing the film, but the, Man, the balls it took to make a movie like this. There's just the sheer balls in in this current climate, and how, but the beautifully lighthearted, you know, like how do you make a Nazi movie based in Nazi Germany that makes you go aw? Like I, I probably was like aw, like like I don't know how many times I did that in the film, and it's it's and it's straight straight nazi germany for written from the the nazis perspectives like not even like every nazi movie we've ever seen is always written from the americans perspective like this was this was all written from a german perspective in nazi germany as a kid who is just fanatically all about adolf hitler and the in the the alt-right like it's and and still you you leave that movie not feeling offended, not feeling like bad, not feeling like dirty for for 
watching people say Heil Hitler 70 times <laughs> in a movie. Like it, it, man, to, to walk that line and make a good movie, it, it deserves, it deserves the recognition. And I think it got, it's getting the proper recognition just by being nominated. Um, one film that I, all three of us saw that I think is, you know, worth definitely us talking about, um, one last time again would be marriage story. That was, I, you know, it's, it's definitely not in the wheelhouse of type of films that I'm always going to watch or check out, but it just, you know, I, man, I felt like, I felt like I was an arbitrator in a, in a divorce. I really did. Like, no, like, like it was so honestly, well done. It, it was well done in the sense that it was well performed. It was incredibly well performed where you, yeah, you actually believed that like I'm watching mom and dad break up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. And like I said, as a person who watched my dad get divorced twice, like, man, it, it really hit home in a lot of parts. It really, well, it, it really home, felt real. I, I, you know, how many people does it hit home for that's currently in a marriage, right? That's on the brink or, or they're watching their own lives kind of similar. I, yeah, I yeah, this movie, similar this movie this. might've been the straw in a few relationships. Yeah, I know, honestly, <laughs> I know a couple of people that are in relationships that were right now, they're like, you know what? I know that's a good film, but it's just not it's too real. We're yeah. not going to watch this. <laughs> and it's so I, I think I don't think the, I actually don't find the 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 story or whatever else to to be the spectator. I find the performances to be ph- phenomenal. I think both uh, Adam Driver and Scarlett did a, a great job playing playing the role, and the supporting cast did a great job. I, I find it to be one of the weaker ones, though, in this overall category for for winning Best Picture. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect it to win. <laughs> I, I think, th- I think their performances for sure have been nominated. But if they'd have took this off the best picture list, I wouldn't have been mad. I yeah. like I said, I, I think the movie as a whole um, doesn't stand up to to its competition for sure. But like, you, like you said, the performances were, I like, I was, I felt, I felt bad watching that movie. I, I felt it, it really brought up some shit. I, I, I bury. <laughs> you know, I bury in the back of my mind. It brought up some shit because I mean, I'm I, I've gone through a divorce too, and and I this movie made me thank God that I was you know with a person that was able to to not have a divorce like this, and and we we do co-parent and get along very well and things like that. So watching that movie made me really have a lot of a lot of respect for my ex-wife. All right, and then. uh I don't know if you guys have any parting yeah. words to say about the last three. I mean, we've talked a great deal about 1917, Once Upon a Time, and Parasite. But uh, I'm, I'm just any, any parting shots. Yeah, one thing I'm going to say is that it was kind of important. Um, I, I feel like both both Parasite and Joker were both films that really I think touched on some big themes and issues within our our current culture and like what we're going through right now is like and i feel like that's oh yeah that that family and parasite i was really just rooting for the entire time like yeah because pa- parasite was really about like it w- really showed class division and i think that's one of the reasons why and hustle trans- and and what so you'll well. do to get out of yeah. that out of that poverty you know it was really like you know that that was a family of just like they they knew the situation they were in, but they weren't accepting it, and they were willing to do all kinds of things to get out of out of that situation. You know what I mean? And I loved how they 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 were a true family in in the sense of they were all in it together. You know what I mean? It wasn't just about the son trying to get out of poverty. It wasn't just about like the dad trying to to bring up his family. It was literally the entire family in it together trying to to better their lives and i i really i really did enjoy that theme yeah and i like the fact too that it was a film that that it, there wasn't really i mean there was you know it wasn't really clear like like there wasn't a hundred percent these are the good guys or the bad guys like everybody kind of on each side was in some way you know they had their good traits and their bad and also too for the like it showed the wealthy and the the lower class living off of each other, they both were parasites in a way. You know, like the where yeah. the, the the wealthier people obviously needed the employment of the low, of the others. Yeah, Joker, Joker, and Parasite had really great social commentary. Yeah, um, and I and I think that's needed nowadays more than ever too. All right, 
Well, so yeah, and for those that want us to talk more about Joker, there's an actual entire podcast dedicated to yeah. mine and Ken's thoughts on the Joker. Yes. So if you'd like to go to the Patreon exclusive, um, it's now made for public also. So you can hear our, our whole in depth thoughts on, on that film. So I don't think we need to, to rehash those open too much now. So let's just get into our so final the pick. Case. Sean, Sean you're 19, the guest. You go 18. ahead. Yeah, uh, it's. I feel like it's is that who you think like because I have who I think is going to win and who I'm rooting for is that both for you or I'm okay so I'm I'm rooting for Parasite I I would love that but it's 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 such a long shot but I would love to see that it would be phenomenal it would be a huge step for the Academy Awards nothing a foreign films never won in this category South Korean film was the first time it's ever been even you know acknowledged nominated in this category and this is the film to do it. I felt like like back to those themes and whatnot. But 1917 is the safest bet. I think that's who's going to win. And I'm rooting for Parasite. Okay. So same with myself. I think 1917 wins it. I, I if I had if I was a betting man, I'd put my money on 1917. But I'm really rooting for Joker. I, I really am. Just like you said, the social commentary is the same as Parasite. So I think we both can really appreciate the social commentary. The fact that in a day and age of superhero films over the last decade, how many superhero films we've had and how Scorsese, you know, and, and, and everybody there, it's not cinema to them and whatnot to have a movie like Joker be made and be received as well as it was. And I, I just, yeah, I really hope they win it just because I think it, it really, and it, I wanted to I wanted to to kind of justify making future movies like the Joker. Like we don't need a a Batman movie that's made for every audience. Give me give me an R-rated Batman that is that is really gritty or you know like take take some of these characters that there's there's thousands of of characters that we grew up on that you don't need to just give us the cookie cutter version of them. I think if Joker wins an award like this, it really opens up the door to have some, some really interesting stories told about the characters we love. So I, I'm really rooting for Joker. I will say one quick thing. Yeah. On that, on that note is this is probably the one time I can think of in history where a superhero movie does have a good chance. Like, because of again how they made this film like if, if there's ever an opportunity for a superhero film to win best picture it would be with joker yeah it takes not having a superhero in the movie to win a superhero movie. <laughs> right <laughs> but uh <laughs> but yeah i haven't seen 1917 i don't think i'd be mad if they won it but i, I would root for uh for for joker uh for the same reasons uh as, as steve i think it's uh it's an important movie uh for 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 many reasons for the genre for 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 storytelling for the way it was put together the the interpretation within society what it says about mental health and and the the the, the problems associated all of it uh, I think it's it's a definitely a unique film I'm rooting for it but I don't think it's going to win I think 1917 probably is going to win and just not seeing the movie but knowing the level of of attention. To, to the details and to the work put into that movie, I would have zero problems with still, that. Still, still try to go see it this week. Sometime, I, yeah, I do. Yeah, you should, like, see. man, if you can, if you got a couple hours where you can sneak away, man, take them because you will not be disappointed. And especially with, I know how much you know about um, warfare and things like that. Like, you, you'll love this. You'll love that movie. It was phenomenal. So yeah, 1917 wins it. I'm not going to be mad at all. No, nope. like not one yeah. bit. It is completely justified. But I have, you know, I have my personal favorite for my personal reasons, and I got my fingers crossed. Fun, fun, fun little fact too is, um, whoa, what the fuck? My brain just farted completely. Forget what I was going to say. <laughs> All right, no fun facts. No fun facts. You get, you get no fun I had, facts. I had, no. I had something. I had something. <laughs> the fun facts will be a Patreon exclusive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my, my coffee's wearing off. <laughs> um, all right, well that uh, that rounds up this uh, marathon session here of, uh, of of Oscars talk. But uh, we hope you enjoyed uh, enjoyed this special 
episode here that uh that we will release yeah we thank sean for, for hanging out um you know he was definitely the one cantina group member that we knew seen the majority of these films uh he's it's probably the only one i know that sees as many movies as i do yeah and thank uh, you for having and somebody who who actually has a who's who's a, a writer in his own uh regard and creator and uh definitely brings a different perspective than uh than us, us well, the dummies. one thing I can say is that we don't have the same taste in movies, but I will say that that Sean and I share the same respect for for film. So that I think that's very important when it comes to um, being objective and critiquing and things like that. We're not all going to like the same things, but you, you need to respect the craft and you need to respect uh, what what people are trying to put out there. And I think we both t- uh, have a great respect for for film. Yeah, there's you know that's the thing too is a lot of people have their. Uh, I noticed, you know, certain people have their kind of their guilty pleasures. Um, and no matter how much of a, I feel like most people I know, no matter how much of a film critic you are, how many, you know, if you get snobby, you still are going to have certain things that I think you just, you you give a little bit more leeway to, you know, like I know people who are really into sci-fi um, in general, they'll, they'll put up with bad acting in a sci-fi film, but then you well, and that kind of that kind of touches us on on how like us wasn't nominated. You know, like Hollywood always shafts horror, and there's a lot of people that love the the horror genre. But I'm sorry, guys, you're not gonna get shiny medals for for making scary gory movies no matter how good it is just because you're in the minority you're in the minority of society i'm not a horror fan you know i have a great respect for the genre and what it takes to make those films and and i understand people's love for them but it's it's not for me and i think the majority of film goers feel the same way kind of i do so that, that's why a Lupita kind of loses out this year and why an Us doesn't, yeah. doesn't get nominated for any of these things. I guess real quick, while we have an opportunity, my biggest snub, or the only snub I can really think of for this year, I mean, because there was so many great films and the only thing that I felt like was kind of left out was Midsummer, And uh, I don't think it would have, you know, deserved a best picture. Um you know, yeah, I'm gonna try to watch that this week because I've heard so many good things about that movie. I gotta, I gotta put it in my brain. But it was, it was another film that used a lot of natural lighting. They built some sets. They had some awesome costumes. You know, they could have easily. And then also Florence's performance in it was was phenomenal. But of course, these snubs or anybody that we're talking about, these are people that could have been nominated, but they didn't have a chance of winning not against this competition this year. So at the end of the day, it was really just so they can get a nomination and, you know, yeah, Yeah. there's no participation awards in Hollywood folks. All right. Well, that all said, thanks again for, for listening nerds. And, uh, if you uh, disagree or uh, call the voicemail line, I want to, I want to air some voicemails (laughs) the next Monday after these Oscars. I want to, I want to air some voicemails. You do that or, uh, or just join the conversation and, uh, and give your thoughts as I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll be recapping, some of the Oscars and uh, sharing some of uh, of the winners over on the the Nerd Cantina community group over at uh, the Nerd forward slash community. So join us over there. And uh, until next time, yeah, th- thanks for hanging out, guys. Thank you.